Oh yeah, oh yeah, we in here. It's your brother DJ Sandrock, the Blaze Bible Study Live. 484-767-6684 is the number to call in. I'm making sure I'm having everything live here. So we live and direct. Um, and let me go for it, man. We are here. And this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting one. God bless you, God bless you. Welcome to the Blaze Live. So when is with a Z.org streaming live on the player, live on the podcast, live on social. And we got a heavy one today. This is a heavy one. We're going to pray hard because this is a heavy topic. Breaking the power of familiar spirits. There's spirits out there that are familiar to us. They look familiar. They act familiar to what we used to be like before Christ. And they're trying to act funny nowadays, right? And we need to recognize them. And we need to put them back in their place. In their proper place. Amen. So let me know how the sound is. Hopefully I don't sound robotic as other times. And let me just monitor this out real quickly, if you don't mind. Amen. Let me monitor this out. So you'll probably hear a little bit of some audio here real quick for a couple of seconds. I just want to make sure um, we're live here. Yeah, so we're good. All right. And also let me connect uh, the phone line to... God bless you, Sister Lissette. Welcome to the blaze. Uh, let me connect the phone line to the board, the switchboard here and the mixer. Amen. So that way we can have that up and running as well. So you already know this is something um, that's been brewing. And I just wanted to wait for God to give me the green light to speak on this. And I believe I believe he spoke today and he want, he's ready for me. Um, I'm ready for him to speak about this situation that we're going through because I'm not alone when it comes to familiar spirits. If you look at the word familiar spirits, let me go back to um, the flyer here. If you look at the word familiar spirits, you're going to notice that there's fam, liar. See that? Fam, liar. These spirits are lying to our families. So don't play with familiar spirits. Do not play with familiar spirits. That's a warning. And that's from the bottom of my heart. Do not play around with familiar spirits. Why? Because although we have the spirit of God in us, we have the spirit of God in us, the hope of glory. That doesn't mean that we can't be oppressed. That doesn't mean that we can't have spirits, familiar spirits, evil spirits playing around with our mindset, show us things, reveal things that we shouldn't be looking at. Familiar spirits tonight on the Blaze Live with your brother DJ Sandrock. Live chat, 484-767-6684. Live call-ins. If you experienced anything that happened to you recently or in the past about familiar spirits. But I just want to warn you right now. If you don't cover yourself with prayer when it comes to these type of topics in the scripture... Amen. You're inviting familiar spirits into your house, into your mindset or whatever. Got to be prayed up when we speak about this. So I suggest if you have young kids uh, under the age of 12, under the age of 12, and you parents make the decision whether or not your 12 year old is mature enough to listen to this type of Bible study tonight. But I suggest 12 and under, it's a no go. It's a no go. Unless you are prayed up. Prayed over your children, prayed over your household, prayed over your family. I don't even suggest an adult connect with this Bible study tonight. That's how serious it could get real fast. And I'm not playing and I'm not exaggerating. I know about these topics. I've lived a lot of what I'm about to speak about um, because familiar spirits are still around. But they're not welcome in my house. You know, one of the easiest ways, and then we're going to pray, cover this in prayer. Then I'm going to give us all a minute to share. The easiest, one of the easiest ways that I found to keep familiar spirits away and out of your family or out your house, out your situation, is to have the word of God playing in your house 247. How do you do that, Sam? How do you do that? Well, if you have money, get an intercom system and hook up, uh, you know, iPod or whatever, iPad um, that has the Bible app that plays 24-7 on a loop or, you know, the poor man's way. Not really poor, but the other way is to have a, a device that you're not using no more. So it's not, you know, it's not connected to like data 
but you can still use Wi-Fi if you have Wi-Fi in your home. Just download the Bible study app, the Bible app, press play on any of the various versions that have audio of the Bible being read and run that. Loop it 24-7. Let it play from Genesis to Revelation. It doesn't even have to be loud. It could be quiet. Like right now, I have it in the studio. It's like a whisper. Why? Because the devil, the enemy, the demons, the familiar spirits hate the word of God. And they don't want to be listening to the word of God while they're hanging out in your home or trying to get into your mindset. They don't want to hear the word because they know the word is real. They know the word is powerful and they know sooner or later the name Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach is going to come up and they despise the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, the name alone has the power to make demons run, to make demons flee. And they hate that. The reason why I have these headphones on, just in case you're wondering, is because I'm doing a podcast as well as I'm doing a live stream. And if you call in, I want to be able to hear you clearly. So that way I have the headphones on. 484-767-6684. We're going to talk for familiar spirits. Have you ex- experienced anything demonic in your life from a childhood situation or maybe right before you got saved or now that you're saved, you're still going through these things? Well, we're going to help break the power of familiar spirits out, off your life, off your family and out of your house. Let's get a, We're going to kick them out. Let's kick those spirits out in Jesus name. Amen. So let's pray. If you have any prayer requests, comments, concerns or anything like that, put them on now. I'm going to leave 30 seconds up here for you to do so. If not, and also sell our radio network on the player. God bless you all for listening. It's your brother DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez. And thank you all for listening for Sell our Radio 247 on the player. Um, I'm really grateful for you guys hanging out with us as well. We have um, like around 30 people listening right now as well. Um, and we have a podcast all over. And that could really reach thousands of people as it does every single week. So if I don't see a prayer request, if nobody calls in with a comment, question, concern, or prayer request, I'm going to take liberty and pray over this Bible study tonight. I'm going to pray right now, right? Father God, I pray that you would open our eyes to the supernatural, that you will open our eyes to what's really happening behind the veil. I pray that we would not take this lightly, but we would take this seriously. That we will not act on emotion. We will not get a spirit of fear that you haven't given us. But we will come through in the power and might of your word. I pray, Lord God, for your word to be relevant today to every single viewer, every single listener at the sound of my voice. By the power of your Holy Spirit that you will move us in a powerful dimension of spiritual warfare. That we will be able to take out anything that is not of you outside of our mindset, outside of our family, outside of our homes, and so forth and so on. I pray, Lord God, the power of your angelic host to move according to your word and your will over our lives in Jesus' name. I pray covering over our mindset, everything we hear, everything we see, and everything we say that will be powered by your Holy Spirit. I pray against any demonic influence that's trying to infiltrate, distract, or destroy. I pray against that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for Arquan angels, ministry angels, warring angels to be ready for war tonight. And to win the war and to win the battles that we fight in a supernatural way, in a supernatural warfare, in the spirit realm. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. So let's cover ourselves. Let's stay focused. Let's stay in this word because um, this is going to happen tonight, right now, in a couple of minutes. I'm going to give myself a minute to share this out. And when I do share this out, you share it out. If you know somebody that's not on social media, but you want them to connect because maybe they have a story to tell. Maybe they, they're dealing with a situation right now. We're going to break them out of any power of the demonic or any breaking the power of familiar spirits in your life and in my life. Today, I'm done. You know, it's so annoying to be born again and have to deal with this demonic stuff, right? But it goes with the territory. But we have to know how to deal with this. And not to take it lightly. This is not hocus pocus. This is not, you know, Harry Potter stuff. This is real life stuff that goes on in the supernatural realm. So I'm praying that God will open our eyes to the supernatural. For those who are willing to see behind the veil. And God knows our heart. He knows what's going to like scare the wits out of us. And he knows what's going to make us get angry with the righteous anger. And call out things that need to be called out. And kick them out. Whatever needs to be kicked out. Amen. So let me get this ready to start sharing. You start sharing as well. Amen. Um, This is going to be a powerful one. So I'm believing God to move 
on behalf by way of his Holy Spirit on behalf of this Bible study tonight. Amen. And if you're dealing with any demonic influences and you want to share, amen, I'll give you some time to share. But if I sense anything coming from the supernatural realm on the opposite side, amen, I'll have to stop the conversation and pray against anything that's trying to be dumped on here that is unholy. Or well, we're coming by way of Holy Spirit, not by way of unholy spirit. Amen. So just prepare yourself and be prayed up all through this, all through this, all through this. I don't want nobody being played around with right now by the demonic influence. And right now, uh, the hate of our souls is going to hate this Bible study. So I'm really prayed up and prepared for anything that's going to happen during this Bible study. Because I believe we have the victory in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All I, all I got to do is say his name and demons flee. So I don't have to worry about any demonic influence in my home because I speak the name of Jesus. And they can't hang out when we're speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When we're talking about the word, when we're speaking the word, when we're praying in Jesus name, they can't hang out. They could come to next door neighbors and all that stuff, stuff, wait outside the door, but they ain't coming in here because they're not invited. But I'm noticing a lot of people that I know are starting to invite evil spirits, are starting to invite familiar spirits just because they want to be cordial and they want to be nice and they want to be all inclusive and they're bringing things into their homes that should not be there. And there is no, there is no room for demonic influence in my house. You are not invited, devil. You are not invited, demon. You are not invited, familiar spirits, into this home. And you can say the same thing, too, over your home. Amen? So let's take a minute to share this out. And when we come back, we'll we jump in um, to breaking the power of familiar spirits right here on The Blaze Live. I'll be right back. Hello. This is Joel Man, oh man, that minute is incredible. I got a phone call, but it was sounded like a recording, so I hung up. So if, if that wasn't a recording, you sounded like a recording, so I hung up on you. Sorry about that. Uh, now I'm, I'm thinking about it. I said, man, I hope I didn't hang up on the first caller of the night. Um, but if it was you, you really did sound like a recording, so I hung up. It sounds like a telemarketing thing. I apologize beforehand. I'm not trying to be a wise guy or anything by hanging up on anybody. Uh, let me just see this is, if this is still hooked up on my Bluetooth. Um, yeah, it's hooked up. Um, so we're good. So we're good. All right. So let's get into this, man. Breaking the power of familiar spirits. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, 484-767-6684. I'll be trying to monitor the phone line as we go forward in this as well. And I'll try to monitor the, the live as well as we move forward. Amen. So... We're live also on the Cellar Radio 247 player, so all the listeners there as well. If you're ready, you could call in 484-767-6684. And I apologize to the first caller if I hung up on you. You really did sound like a telemarketing um, pre-recorded situation going on there. So let's go. This society that we live in, first and foremost, um, unknowingly function under the influence of familiar spirits. I don't know if you have recognized that. And here we go. A Christian is going to start talking about the homosexual agenda. I want to bring that up first because that's one of the most popular ones that are happening in my lifetime, at least in the last 20 years. When I was growing up, I'm 50 years old, by the way. When I was coming up, homosexuality was like secret behind the scenes it was down key, low key, you know, on the down low. And in my family, there were situations where we had that going on. So I'm, I know about that, just in case. 
I didn't get saved until I was 30 years old. I'm 50. I only been saved 20 years old, 20 years. Okay. So I'm 20 years in the faith, just in case a lot of people think that I grew up in a church. Not so. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is not, I recognize that spirit. So every time I see it, I recognize it. I don't shy away. I don't judge it. I just don't invite it. And that spirit, right? Whether it's a homosexual spirit or heterosexual spirit that has tendencies to fornicate, adultery, sexual sin, all that stuff. I'm familiar with those spirits. So I'm just opening with that just to let you know that I'm familiar with those things. Although in a church setting, we might not be talking about that a lot because it's a hot topic. But on the podcast, on the Bible study, we can talk about it. Why? Because we're on social media, number one. And number two, we're on podcasting that reaches people all around the world. And they know what I'm talking about. So I'm a born again believer. I believe what the scripture says. And that's a familiar spirit when it comes to the scriptures. Amen. And I can prove it scripturally. And I experience those familiar spirits. So I know where they are, how they act, how they respond. Um, And I don't invite it. But I don't shun it away either because there's people that have those familiar spirits in them. Not They're not demons. They're people. Living, breathing, people with feelings, with a heart, right? Um, they have personality. They, they are people. And they are created in the image of God. That's number one. Number two, when those familiar spirits are around me, right? It doesn't really bother me too much. But just as just me, I will not. Let my six-year-old daughter go sleep over in your house. I will not let my six-year-old daughter, you and my daughter, go to the movies alone. I will not let you, familiar spirit, in that situation, take my daughter to the restroom, to the bathroom, to the ladies' room. It's just me, right? Now, how do you feel about that? How would you deal with that? That's how you could tell whether or not you know how to handle the familiar spirit or not. Some people say, oh, no, it's all good. Um, You know, I'm not going to be judgmental. I'll let my six-year-old, 12-year-old, 13-year-old hang out with those people that have those familiar spirits by themselves. Well, if you're the parent, then that's on you. I'm my children's parent, so I say no, and my wife will agree with me. Amen? Why? Because then we have to deal with the familiar spirit in our home, through our child. And she's already asking questions. There's commercials all over with the, she said the other day she was watching a commercial of a series that's coming out. It's probably out already. I don't watch a lot of TV, so forgive me. It was two men and a child. And my daughter said, why why is there two dads, no mom, and there's a baby? Hello, familiar spirits. So she will not be watching that. I'm not saying, daily encouragement, thank you for sharing my Bible study on your page, on your group. I'm not saying that she's not going to be blind to what what's out there. I'm just saying we're not inviting familiar spirits like that. How about this one? Evil spirits. Spirits of witchcraft. I experienced those type of things, so I recognize those familiar spirits. Evil spirits, the evil eye, Santaria, witchcraft, you know, Wiccan and all that stuff. Yeah, I dabbled in black magic before I was saved. Because I've seen things in my childhood. They do work. They do have power. And it is supernatural. So I won't deny that. Scripture. The Bible says, stay away from witches, soothsayers, psychics, anyone who um, um, conjures up the dead. God is speaking about those things that a lot of people say, that's not real. Oh, I go to horror movies because that's not real. Really? We were watching um, Mortal Kombat. I know I'm already in trouble by saying that a born-again believer who does Bible studies saw Mortal Kombat the other day with another brother in Christ. We saw it because, you know, uh, we didn't invite nobody else. It was just me and him. And we already agreed that we was going to watch it and it wasn't going to mess with us. We saw it. But before that, you have the coming attractions. And we was in an IMAX theater. Shout out to Naomi. She hooked us up. But anyway, anyways, Angelina. But anyway, um... We were in there, and there was a horror movie that's coming out. I think it's called The Conjuring Part 2 or 3. I don't know. And I was looking at it, and it brought memories of familiar spirits, evil spirits that I had to deal with before I got saved 
after I got saved and every now and then. Familiar spirits. And I was like, heck no. I looked at him and I said, I ain't watching that movie. I don't need those things in my life. Those things are real. God speaks of it in his word in the Old Testament. Speaks of it in the New Testament spiritual warfare. But he doesn't endorse those things. I'm just saying. He doesn't endorse it. It's real. You can see it in the scriptures. We actually see a prophet being raised from the dead by a witch of Endor. In the scriptures. Not, not a movie. Not science fiction. Not a horror movie. In the scriptures. We see those things. So our society causes many to unknowingly function under the influence of familiar spirits. These spirits operate undercover in the name of, check it out, tradition, trends. I should have kept all my clothes from the 70s and 80s. It's so funny when I see the younger generation rocking stuff that I used to wear way back in the day. And they're saying, look, look what I have. This is the new style. It's like, it's a new style. That's like 30 years old. But, you know. These spirits operate undercover in the name of traditions, trends, fashion, lifestyle, and personality traits. I used to, I used to say this. When somebody used to say, I was born gay. I was born, you know, this way, that way. I say, impossible. Uh, uh, I changed my mind. God changed my mind. We were all born into sin. So they're right. They were born with tendencies to sin. They were born with familiar spirits. Maybe in a family tree, there was things that were passed down. They inherited the sinful nature. So I used to say, no, that's impossible. God doesn't um, you know, make people born that way. No, we're born into iniquity and sin. Uh, a brother confronted me with that. And he says, why do you always say that um, people can't be born gay or born you know, sinful with sinful desire and just down a third sexual desire? I said, oh, no, because God, you know, he wouldn't do that to us. But the scripture is even playing field when it comes to the birth and the natural. We're all born into iniquity and sin. So my apologies when I used to say that um, years back. And he said, no, it's impossible. It is possible. So I have to understand that and I have to respect that. But I also know that we need to be born again. That's why we have to be born again. So that way those familiar spirits, those things in our ancestry, those things in our family tree, they don't have to take rule. They don't have to take reign over our lives any longer, anymore. I remember when I first got saved, I think my son was 12 or 13. I always do the math a little bit wrong. Could have been older. But anyway, when I got saved, I told my son, the things that I did in my life when I was your age, it's broken. You don't have to go through it no more. He didn't know what I was talking about. So I had like a, you know, a man to young man discussion about hormonal things that's going to be happening and why he wakes up a certain way and why a certain thing and on his body is doing what it's doing. And I explained to him, I said, but that no longer has to take any control over you because it is broken. I don't, I don't think he knew what I was talking about. Hopefully, um, by way of Holy Spirit, he'll catch what I was talking about. If he hasn't caught it already. So that's how in our society, that's how familiar spirits become our enemies. Through traditions, through trends, fashions, lifestyles, and personality traits. A familiar spirit is any demonic assignment that surveys and studies people. These evil spirits, these familiar spirits study us to a T. The evil spirit that was designed or assigned to my life to take me out. He lost, by the way, or they lost. I remember um, I wrote a song to my wife when I, around when I was first changing. I said, the devil didn't send a demon. The devil sent a whole army of demons to try to take me out. I felt the oppression. I felt the, um, the demonic influence in my old house where I used to live in Allentown. I felt it. And he wasn't playing with me. He was trying to take me out. I felt it. So I said, he didn't send... A uh, soldier, he sent the whole army to try to take me out. But I had one God that wiped out that whole army that was sent. Amen. So a familiar spirit is any demonic assignment that surveys and studies people, territories. It's a ter territorial thing. That's why I have brothers and sisters that I personally know that are on the prayer wall at three in the morning, four in the morning, during the times where the spiritual warfare is heightened during those times. In those wee hours in the morning. Some of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Wake up at 5 in the morning. And do Bible prayers. 
they pray like uh, prayer lines at five in the morning, knowing that there's activity going on in the atmosphere. People might think we're crazy, but we're not. We're sane when we just know the tactics of the enemy. So these demonic spirits, these familiar spirits, they study people, territories, and bloodlines of families. The the bloodline, I don't even know how far my bloodline goes, but the demonic influence, the familiar spirits do. There must have been something attached beyond the two, three, four generations back that was attached, that was at war for the souls of my family. I seen it with my own eyes. When my grandmom on my mom's side uh, was still alive, she has been gone for years now. I remember, like it was yesterday, going to her house in Brooklyn, New York. I was already living in Pennsylvania and going, and she kept on repeating herself over and over again, the same thing. So I called my mom, and I was like, Mom, why is Grandma repeating herself over and over again? My grandma was like, my mom was like, yeah, you know, I woke, I work with the elderly, and that might be signs of dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, so, you know, we're, we're watching her, and we're hoping that that's not the case. But she said a story about a man that would come to our house in the middle of the night and drop off three kids and those little kids would go inside a closet in her room. And I said, what did you just say? And she said it two times exactly the same. Three times exactly the same in total. And the closet she was talking about, uh, can't share the personal things in my family tree, but that closet she was per- talking about, I knew what was in that closet. So I went into spiritual warfare right then and there for my grandmom's soul. I recognized what the enemy was trying to tell me. I recognized what he was trying to do in my grandmom's home. And I recognized that familiar spirit right away. And we went for it. The room, ladies and gentlemen, was sideways. And I was straight. Praying in the spirit. Going to spiritual warfare. The room was like this, ladies and gentlemen. The floor was like this. Had a lump in the floor. Things started moving. Voices started coming. Voices started coming. My my great uncle, which he has passed away as well. May he rest in peace. He was laughing, saying that he was the devil. And all this was going on. I was by myself. My flesh was scared stiff, but the spirit man in me was like, we're going to war for this soul right here. And at the end of, I don't know how long it was, it was a while. At the end of whatever happened, things started calming down. The room shifted back to normal. The bubble went away. Um, Then I asked my grandmother, are you okay? She said, yeah, I'm ready to receive Jesus. What do I have to do? Let her, by way of prayer, she received Jesus in her life. And I said, okay, grandma, in two weeks, I'm going to come back and follow up with you. She was like, what should I do in those two weeks? And God told me for her to read the book of Psalms. Start reading Psalms. I said, grandma, just start reading Psalms. And I'll be back in two weeks. Two weeks later... I come by, and guess what? I walk in. She was like, hey, how you doing? How are you and your three kids? At that point, (laughs) I only had one kid. So she was getting Alzheimer's. But she was born again, and the rest is history. So I'm believing that I will see her again in eternity. My other grandmom, she um, passed on as well. On my dad's side, we had a language barrier. It's my fault. My fault, I don't speak too much Spanish, so I had a language barrier with her. But I got to see her in her ending years. I got to bless her. I got to pray with her. Uh, So I'm trusting God in that situation as well. Uh, I seen some things when I was a kid. When my aunt, uh, my my father's sister, passed, seen some things, experienced some supernatural things. I got overcome by a familiar spirit somewhere uh, that was passed down to me. And I've acted like a wolf at one time, like a dog sniffing for things. Me. It really happened to me. You know, I wasn't on, I wasn't high on drugs, nothing. I was so young. I believe it was just before I was a teenager for sure. And that's why I recognize these familiar spirits. They work through trends. They work through fashion. They work through bloodlines. They work through people. The goal of their assignment is to gather spiritual intelligence that will open doors to instigate death and destruction. Don't go to a psychic no more. Stop it. Oh no, I'm going to see, you know, the stars, the astrology. 
no, it's okay, you know, the psychic. No, it's okay, I go to the Santera, you know, she tells me about the future and all that stuff. Stop it. You know where they're getting the information from? You said something to somebody, or somebody in your family said something to somebody, the demons listen to what was being said, they transfer that information because they're attached to the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, these psychics, these astrologers, and these card read tarot card readers, these witches, these warlocks, they're attached to the supernatural. Yes, they are. And they're hearing from demons, not angels, not saints. They're hearing from demons. Stop going over there. Tell them I said so. I'm waiting to meet one of them that's kind of attached to uh, offspring of my spiritual family. I'm waiting to meet her face to face. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that day to come. And supposedly, she's supposed to be around in a, in a family engagement, a family celebration, that I'm going to be there. So I'm waiting. Why? Because that ain't happening. It ain't, it ain't no power. Complete shutdown for that demonic influence. Complete shutdown for that power that she thinks she's going to have over any situation. Not in the kingdom of God. Not in the house of God. Not in, around the man of God or woman of God. Not around my family. And that family that I'm talking about, it will be broken. Free. I've made a mistake. I made a lot of mistakes Growing up in the faith, right? Growing up in and knowing Christ, um, casting out demons. I've done it. People say, "Oh, you can't do that." Why not? The Bible says we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, and we shall cast out demons in Jesus' name by the power of Jesus. So, minding my own business, being you know a born again believer, preaching the gospel, evangelizing, rapping, and all this other stuff. Uh, we were at uh, kind of like a famous park in Allentown. I don't want to mention the park's name because. Uh, I don't have permission to mention these things. Popular Park in Allentown. I was on the stage rapping with, um, with the group. We used to call ourselves the Holy Underground. And there was this guy in the crowd. And after we were done, he wanted to battle me. I was like, why would you want to battle a Christian rapper? Like, I'm a Christian rapper. No, I want to battle you. You said some things up there. And I want to let you know that, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay, go for it. I mean, I don't know what the, what the, I don't know what the point would be. But I said, go ahead. He was with his girlfriend. And when it was my turn, you know, he cursed me out. You know, he already did the gun bars and killed me 10 times and my family and raped my wife and all that. You know, all the street rap. That's a demonic spirit. That's a familiar spirit. So I let the spirit talk. And then I had nothing written, nothing prepared. The Holy Spirit took over and I must have did like 32 bars or 64 bars or whatever. And his girlfriend was holding on tight to his shirt like if I was beating him up. That was all spiritual, supernatural stuff. I wasn't beating him up. I think I was uplifting him. I think I was praising God over his life and all this stuff. I wasn't cursing, obviously. I wasn't battling any demon, obviously. I don't even know what I said. All I know is that my son was there. He said, Dad, that was good what you, what you just said. That you know you won that battle. I was like, I don't even know what I said. Holy Spirit took over the whole situation. That's a familiar spirit. So I hope you're getting what I'm saying. They're around. You know where they are. You know who they are. And you know if they're dealing or messing with your mind. The goal of their assignment is to gather spiritual intelligence that will open doors to instigate death and destruction. They enter and gain power in people's lives by disguising themselves as something common, something familiar. Something familiar. Family is in that word. While operating unawares through people, places, and things. You might have a doll in your house that you don't want to let go for whatever reason. You know, we actually had that clown doll. I took that doll. I threw that doll out. I saw that clown movie. I ain't playing around with that clown face. And I could have sworn that I seen that thing sit up and look at me in the middle of the night when I was a kid. I took that doll. I wasn't even saved. Oh, but I'm not stupid either. Took that doll. I burned that doll. I put it into like, I turned on the, back in the day we used to have the old fashioned, you know, flame that used to come out of the stove. I put the face on it, let it burn a little bit and I threw that out several flights of, <laughs> several flights to, his, to the ground. I wasn't playing around with that because I already knew that was a familiar thing to me so young. And I didn't want to play around with that. If you have a doll, a statue that you probably pray to, a doll that's been in your family for years and years and years, and something just ain't right, right? Something just ain't right. You'll know when something is not right. 
It's because the flow is cut. Right? Holy Spirit is available. Holy Spirit is in you, but there's like something off. The flow is not hitting right. It's familiar spirits. It happens in church. It happens in homes. It happens in ministries. It happens everywhere. If we're not careful, we won't recognize it because they're in disguise and they're trying to be subtle. But they pop up. And I don't want it to be too late for anybody to be overcome by a familiar spirit. We're better than that. We're smarter than that. We know the schemes and tactics of the enemy according to the word. So they enter and gain power in people's lives by disguising themselves as something familiar while operating unawares through people, places, and things. Familiar spirits attach themselves to you through something or someone you are extremely familiar or comfortable with. The enemy don't come with fangs and ghouls and goblins. He comes as a pretty girl, handsome boy, or handsome man. Comes as as a book of romance, comes as you know a teacher, a preacher, and even can disguise himself as an angel of light. So, do you think that we're not dealing with familiar spirits, and that you're not gonna? Have, oh no, I'm holy, man. I'm not gonna ever deal with spirits yet. You think so? Jesus Christ Himself was tempted forty days by the devil himself, and who's the Lord Jesus? The Living Word of God. So what makes you think that you're not going to be tempted by a familiar spirit? And the devil tried everything. He tried his best. And Jesus, humanly, was at his weakest point. Humanly. So the humanness, the humanity of Jesus was tempted. The deed of God could not be tempted, will not ever be tempted. So that's why Jesus said, the word of God says. It is written. And he would speak the word. And the devil would lose every single temptation battle. That's the same way I do it. The same way you should do it when the enemy tries to bring up familiar things from your past and try to make them present. Oh, man. Um, on my other website, if you want to get deeper into this, I have a website that we could go private because I can't share too much. Hey, Amen. I don't want to scare people off. But there's situations that are happening among us. And for years, I had an issue with looking people in the eye. Because I had this thing, and I believe it was the Lord gave me it a long time ago before I was saved even, that I could see through people's eyes what's going on in their soul type of thing. So I stopped with the eye contact. It was making me, it was messing me up, to say the least. And I remember we were at a marriage retreat, and I had to look my wife in the eyes, and I I was fighting myself not to do it. I didn't want to see the pain that she went through. I didn't want to see anything um, like that in my wife's soul. Um, but I'm over that now, and I actually do do the eye contact. And God, although people may it may sound to people like some kind of mysticism or witchcraft or whatever, it's not. It's a gift of God, and I allow God to use that gift in my life now. I don't deny what He, he gave me, and you shouldn't deny what He gave you also in a supernatural realm. That's all I'm gonna leave it there. Familiar spirits attach themselves to you through something or someone you are extremely familiar or comfortable with. But all the while, their agenda is unknown to you. So recently, I was um, prompted to tell a brother in Christ that I love much to be mindful of trends or routines or things that cause patterns to happen over and over again that lead to death, sickness, disease. And I was reminding him that we know the tactics of the enemy. So if you recognize any trends that are bringing Sin, sickness, disease into your family, you got to take it out. And the hard part about that, it could be a family member. It could be family, period, like the bloodline. Thank God for a supernatural family at church. Thank God for brothers and sisters in Christ. They asked Jesus, oh, your mother, your brother, you know, this, that, and the third. And Jesus said, who is my family? Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Those who believe in the Father are my family. We have a supernatural family. You're not, not going to hear me saying, oh, you know, you don't have, you know, disregard your blood family. That's, that's ludicrous. I will never say that. But I am saying that if they're attached to familiar spirits, be careful, be mindful, be aware. I'm going to leave it there too. I was going to say something, but I'm not. Holy Spirit said, hold on to that. A person can willfully form a relationship with familiar spirits, oftentimes simply through ignorance. 
because you don't know. Oh, that person's always been like that. Until I moved to Pennsylvania, I didn't know anything about ADHD, ADD, or nothing like that. I realized when I moved from New York to PA, I heard that about 100 times. Like all these diagnoses, oh, I have ADHD, I have ADD. I didn't even know what the heck that meant. We bumped into a young man. Uh, I, I think he's he's okay with me saying this because he mentions it a, a lot too publicly. His name was Gio. We used to call him he's Giovanni, but we, his name was Gio. We call him Gio. And he was, you know, um, they medicated him for ADHD, ADD, all this other stuff, you know, anger management, all this other stuff. But he came into the Holy Underground family. He came into the family of God, right, um, by way of his um, grandma. And we were like, um, you you don't have all of that. So we prophesied over it and said, by the time you leave out of this situation, you'll be free from all the meds and you won't have this ADHD, ADD or whatever. The man is a man of God now. He lives out in Florida, has his own business. He does his own thing. He wants to build the kingdom of God. I heard him on a radio show not too long ago, and he blew my mind. The things he knows about historical things, biblical things. Um, some man got on the radio show and was talking about all kind of stuff that I don't even know what he was talking about. But Jill knew what he was talking about, and he answered the questions. That that made me believe even more in the power of God's word over somebody's life. And familiar spirits that were trying to take him and his family to, you know, to dismantle things, he was no longer attached to those familiar spirits. And he is not. I don't know if he still deals with it every now and then, but he knows what to do, who to go to, who to call, and who, you know. I have another brother, young brother in the Lord, amen, that uh, has have called us, you know, in the past, Talking about he sees spirits, he's dealing with his, you know, stepson and this, that, and the third, and we pray. And one time he called like three of us together, and we hadn't spoken in a while. The three that he called together on uh, a messenger call. And when we're looking at who was connect, who we connected with, we realized that we all impacted this young man's life. And we reunited in prayer and faith and encouragement. That's powerful because we recognize familiar spirits. And you should too. A person can willfully form a relationship with a familiar spirit, so oftentimes simply through ignorance. That is why it's critical to know what you are inviting into your home and into your heart. Leviticus 10, 10, um, 10 and 11. Leviticus chapter 10, verses 10 to 11 instructs the Levites to teach people the difference between what is holy and what is common. What is holy and what is common. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 so then, being always filled with the good courage and confident hope and knowing what that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. And knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 8 now. We are, as I was saying, of good courage and confident hope and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Therefore, whether we are at home on earth or away from home and with him, whether or not, it is our constant ambition to be pleasing to him. For we believers will be called to account and must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, all of us, so that each one may be repaid for what he has done in the body, whether good or bad. That is, each will be held responsible for his actions, purposes, goals, motives, the use or misuse of his time, opportunities, and abilities. Accountability. So we can't go around and say, oh, I didn't know. No, you know now. We just spoke about it. Familiar spirit. They're your foes. They ain't your friends. So listen. For those who are, you know, in Catholicism, the Catholics, stop praying to statues. Does that offend you? If I tell you stop praying, praying to statues? If it does, then show me in the scriptures where anybody was praying to statues. And if they were, what did God call those statues? You do, you do your research. Otherwise, I might be just saying the truth in love. Stop talking to statues, which they don't have ability to speak back. And if they're crying, if they do speak back, you have a bigger problem. Because now you have a familiar spirit active 
and now bold enough to reveal itself and move immaterial things and make them materialize or something like that. Mm -mm, Be careful. This is not nothing to be played around with. God asked me to speak this for it. It's for somebody. Amen. It might be a reminder for me for sure, but it's to let people know that familiar spirits are not our friends. They are actually our foes. So what is the gist? The gist is we need to learn not to play with familiar spirits. We need to learn how to break the power of familiar spirits. And we need to know how and when, how they're coming in and when they're trying to activate in our hearts and our minds and in our families. They are actually, uh, they actually exist. That's what I was going to say. I'm not going to say they're alive because I can't say they're alive. I'm just saying they exist. They do exist. So be careful. Be mindful. Be prayed up. Amen. Uh, We'll continue to talk about this. I have two more parts of this. Amen. It's so quiet. I I found out the other day, yesterday, that people can't make comments on my social if we're not friends. So if that ever happens to anybody, it says you can't uh, make a comment. Switch. Go to my Cellar Radio page. And maybe you can make a comment from my page because I also share it on my page. Sell our radio network if that helps somebody. Because I don't understand why we have to be friends for anybody to comment on a live stream. It might be, it might just be I'm being restricted again on Facebook because of how I do things on their platform. Um, but I'm here. I'm blessed to be a blessing. And I thank you for hanging out with me. If at any moment or time you need to connect with me, amen, let me put some of my contact info here, amen. Um, my email address is here, DJ Sandrock, I saw winners with a Z, dot O-R-G. Um, there, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests that you want to remain private and you want me to hold it in confidence, you could always reach out to me via email and I'll check that and get back to you as soon as I see it and it could respond as soon as I can. Also, if God put it on your heart, to donate and to sow into the ministry, um, you could do it through my PayPal account right there. Um, you know, sow a seed into the ministry to help this ministry, help other ministries, and help other families. And you keep on allowing me to do that. Just the other day, I was able, I was able, check this out, to send some money to a young brother, amen, um, in another state who needed something done uh, for his wife's car. And because of your kind donations, I was able to send them without question. Amen. And the rest is on him. I sent it because I have donors that donate. And I'm telling you, it's helping other families. He was in a, in a tight spot and we were able to help him. We were able to help him. And I give that all glory to God. Amen. Oh, God. Carly, Cheyenne, God bless you. Thank you for this message. Amen. You're very welcome. God bless you as well. Amen. Thank you for joining us. On the live Blaze Bible study. So that's PayPal as well. Um, my famous one, I like this one, the best Cash App app. Amen. It's um, quickly usable. Amen. And I could transfer. That's how I transfer it to the young man through Cash App. So it's dollar sign MSL, Mr. San Lopez, 1971. So you could also donate by way of Cash App as well. Amen. So however the Lord puts it on your heart, do what he says and you will be blessed. And I always, every time I receive a donation or anything like that, amen, I always pray 100-fold return blessing to the donation, to the donor, for somebody who invested their money, their seed into the ministry, amen. And I sow seeds to other ministries as well. Um, Just the other day, I sowed seeds to a ministry um, that I was trying to help and um, got sent back for whatever reason, but amen, but that's just evidence of, you know, me sowing because you're sowing, amen. The kingdom of God, we operate differently. The whole world could be bankrupt, but the kingdom of God will never be bankrupt. We're not worrying about um, uh, Bitcoin or Dogecoin or whatever that is. We're not worrying about that stuff, right? We're not worrying about the roller coaster of finances. The kingdom of God is stable. The kingdom of God is wealthy. The kingdom of God has no lack. The kingdom of God, um, don't worry about the Dow Jones or the, the trades or anything like that. The kingdom of God is well and well financed. Amen. Because you could sow a dollar seed into the kingdom of God and that dollar seed could return to you like a million dollars and plus or whatever. Or it could return to you as a heal, um, a healing, like from cancer or something like that. You sow into the kingdom of God, you sow into good ground and God will send you back a blessing. 
He doesn't he doesn't need our money. But when he sees that we're willing to sow our money into the kingdom, something happens. I know every single time, every single time, for instance, I sold to that young man. And do you know what happened like a day later or two days later? Um, if the math is correct, I can't say the number. I don't want to mess with my blessing, but I want to give you a figure. Uh, 300 times fold blessing I received. I mean, I put some work in it for it, but I received 300 fold blessing. That's, I can't make it up. I'm telling you. And then every time I do that, it's like other parts of the ministry just increase. It's almost like God's showing me like, okay, I saw what you did and you didn't tell nobody. You didn't tell your, le- you didn't tell your right hand what your left hand did. So, you know, here's the blessing. In different ways, in different ways. And he's not a respecter of persons. It just doesn't happen to me. It will happen to you as well. Because God's will over your life is for us to prosper, for me to prosper, for you to prosper as our soul prospers. Because we have a short time here. We have an eternity with him. But I think he wants us to do something while we're here. We can make a difference here on this planet, right? Because once we're with him, there's not going to be no lack. It's not going to be really um, no sacrifice anymore, right? Would be with the true, living, holy, loving, righteous judge and father and God. We're going to be with him. Amen. But in the meantime, let's get busy. Let's watch out for those familiar spirits. Let's break the power of those familiar spirits. I'll probably hit you with a couple of more parts about this. There's more to talk about. So listen up. Listen closely. If you want to share, have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, the phone line is going to be open every time I come on live. 484-767-6684. Do not be afraid to call in with your question, comment, concern, or prayer request. You have something on your heart that you want to share to the masses. Go ahead and do it. Don't let nobody stop you. Amen. So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. He's good. Until the meantime, peace.